Take me back where the smoke rolls black, where the Delft Brise ale flows free, where factory wenches line all the park benches, Cradley Heath meets home to me. As you walk down each street, friendly bloat you will meet, their faces all full of good cheer. But their friendship you'll doubt when the boozers turn out, and you'll feel a big fist in your ear now sing. So take me back where the smoke grows black, where the Delft Brise ale flows free, where factory wenches line all the park benches. Cradley Heath means home to me. As you walk down each street, friendly bloat you will meet, their faces all full of good cheer. But their friendship you'll doubt when the boozers turn out, and you'll feel a big fist in your ear now sing. So take me back where the smoke grows black, where the Delft Brise ale flows free. Where factory wenches line all the park benches, Cradley Heath means home to me. Well, the gas works each night is lit from the light, from the sign of the collier. Yes, in tell them a few of your duties at the uh, Majestic Bingo. the Majestic Bingo. Well, my general duties every day are making sure that the club runs very smoothly. If I'm short of staff, I have to drop in at every point and do the job. Basically, I need to know everything in this club. That's every job? Every job in the club. Including bar, the meals. Bar, meals, buffet, tickets. Everything. 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 Bingo is a popular pastime in the black country and provides the income to keep the old picture palaces in business. As Laverne has just told us, the Majestic is a very busy place and provides all sorts of quality entertainment. You can be wined, dined and entertained and if you're lucky, leave with a full stomach and a pocket full of money. And you'll be a lot richer than when you're coming. Sounds too good to be true, do it? As well you find out at the match, there's a hidden surprises and treasures as well as the ones on display. The opening of the Majestic as a cinema takes us back to March 1936. And it was the start of the talking pictures. And with no TV to compete with in those days, the place must have been packed at Wiggly. In addition to the films, the cinema held wrestling matches and put on shows, but surely it has never been so richly decorated and served as it is today. Truly a gem in the heart of the black country. But what are the place today? Well, the best way to find out about anything is go to the top, and so let's find the manager. It's afternoon at the Majestic Bingo Hall in Cradle Eve, and here with me is the manager, Mark Daniels. Mark, would you, say, would you like to say a few things about your bingo hall and what goes on and what it happens and things like that? Sure, with pleasure. Uh, where you came in this afternoon is our entrance foyer. In there we have our membership system. Uh, members join, it's a free membership, and after 24 hours they're entitled to play with their own membership cards. Uh, then they're entitled to bring in their friends as guests. Uh, from there they move through the foyer into the main auditorium. We have a bar, a uh, well-stocked bar with popular beers. We have a buffet where we serve uh, hot and cold food on every session. Uh, this afternoon's meal was lamb, uh, potatoes, sprouts, mint sauce and tea and coffee and that came out at 50 pence. So it's quite good value from the Very buffet. Uh, we play main stage bingo and party bingo in the club. Uh, today's a Saturday, Saturday evening we have a cabaret on. And we're open uh, seven nights a week, four afternoons. And the only days really shut is uh, Christmas and Boxing Day, so we're open most of the year. As you can see, it's quite a well-appointed club, and we try and keep it as tidy as we possibly can. And I think we serve the members as well as any club in the area. They are very happy, and they keep coming back here, so I'm quite pleased with that. I noticed, I noticed when we came in, the Rogues Gallery, you call it. Oh, yes. The big winners. Can you tell me a bit about those? Yeah, we were very, very lucky. Shortly after we opened, we had five winners in the space of four weeks. And between them, they won £134,000. Uh, and we organised a night where five limousines picked them up at the house at the same time and then brought them to the club. Uh, every table and every chair in the club had a bottle of bubbly on it, so everybody was able to join in with their celebrations. We have moved now upstairs to the old projector room in the Majestic Cinema. Uh, we've come to have a look at the old relics of the past, these old projectors. And I think Mark will tell us a few things about him if he doesn't know about him at all. Uh, I don't know if you know a lot about them, Mark, but uh, 
if you know anything, but let us know a little bit about these things. The projection suite mostly dates back to the 30s. Uh, the projectors at that time were just starting to show talking film. These projectors uh, had to have the voice synchronised with the film and then they were shown through these antique projectors. The projectors themselves didn't use a bulb as source but more of a carbon arc that operated inside the projector. Um, the top half was lowered down to the bottom half until the arc struck and that gave the lighting for the film that was shown through these apertures here and onto the old screen at the front of the house. Obviously this was taking an awful lot of electricity, an awful lot of current and actually drew as much as 200 amps of power up from street level. All of this now is just really being saved for posterity rather than sent to the scrap heap, although unfortunately none of it is in working condition anymore. For some time there was two large cake stand looking pieces of equipment in here that actually were fed through the projector because obviously three or four reels of this had to be put together in one large piece of film which then rests on one of the projectors in this called the cake stand. Asked now to the mini cash, cash call, call, is it? Yes. And it's Joyce. Joyce yes. uh, can you tell us a few of your duties, Joyce, please? Well, I do mini cash calling and uh, I do most lot of the checking, you know, the main session checking. And, um, well, more or less that's all, you know. And what, what's the amount of people can win? Can they have been vast amounts at this or well, small amounts? No, the most I think I've uh, had them play for is about 12, 50, mm. 12, you know. But uh, as of course, it's only 20 pence a game, and you know, we have you know, 68 games a night or a session. So, of course, they you can't avoid a lot, really, you know. Yeah. Well, that would have been a pocket one of them. Oh, yes, thing. and they enjoy it. That's, that's they the enjoy it, thing. yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've been doing it, well, I've been working here 28 and a half years now, so I enjoy it anyway. So I ordered it when it was a cinema then? Uh, I started a month after it changed from the cinema to the bingo. To the bingo, yeah. And if I remember right, this used to be a casino at one time. Not a casino. We did used to have roulette and things like that when we first opened with Star Bingo. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. See, that's the right person and you'll collect the wealth information. This is obviously an highly professional run business which places a huge emphasis on pleasing the customer. Still curious? Well, let's find out more about what happens here. Now, I've got one of the callers here. Could you tell me just your name and what the duties are? And do you do all the job inside the calling? Yeah, my name's Andrew Round. I do main session calling mm -hmm. at weekends. Uh, I sell books, flyers, work computer, basically everything. Anything that needs to be done. And what's the biggest winner you've had when you've been on duty? Me, there's been link winners. And how much? Oh no, I tell a lie, we had the £30,000 of the national game. And you was on, on that night? I was calling that night. Mm. So you had some big winners then yeah. while you've been on? Mm, definitely. Yeah. There have been mainly link winners when I've been calling. And what's, what's that entail, link winners? Cause we've been, uh... It's when all our clubs link up. Yeah. We've got like four clubs on a. Sunday night and we have seven clubs in the week and it's for a thousand pounds and we have to link up to all different clubs. And there's the one with one the least, club, one No, with one the club least. calls yes. that we take in turns for one club calling and we've got repeats and you just bellow out like when somebody shouts if it's at your club. Mm, very good. So thank it's, you. Uh, all right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So it's much, uh, very much a building site and it's been comprehensively refurbished as you can see. It's the home of one of four Christie organs left in the country, uh, which is still housed behind the archway over there. And the company uh, intends at some time in the future to refurbish the organ back into working condition. As far as I'm aware, uh, the building was built sometime in the early 30s by a group of um, local business people who clubbed together and built it as a cinema. And it was converted to a bingo club around about 20 years ago. Massive organ this is. It's housed on three floors and has a host of different instruments as well as a forest of pipes. It used to appear from under the stage on a lift while being played. 
It's still intact, but sadly is in need of some expert restoration, which can't be said of this luxurious palace, the quality of which has probably never been seen in the area before. A colourful setting to enjoy yourself in. The stage still sees entertainment regularly, mainly on Saturdays on Cabaret Night. High mass entertainers, from singers and dancers to comedians, appear. I'm a jolly rolling blade of many a trade and all trades and if you want to know me name just call me Jack of all trades. I've often heard of Cradley Eat, the workshop of the nation. At 21 it's here I come to apply for a situation. I'm a roving jack of all trades and every trade and all trades and if you want to know me name just call me Jack of all trades. In Chester Road I started out where I became a porter My boss and I we soon fell out which got acquainted shorter And then I went to two gates where I was an undertaker And off I went to Fox Oak Street where I was a chain maker We just come to Norman Plants, wet fish shop uh, Norman, I think, was the relation to Joel Malley Which is Railway station, which stands on the main line running from Birmingham to Worcester and Eddyford. As can be seen, the station has recently been modernised and is now served by a remote control level crossing. The picturesque single box, alas, is no longer here. The modernised fleet of trains run a very regular service for about every 20 minutes at peak times. This station is one of a few stops for the express service, which only stops at selected stations. From here, then non-stop to Birmingham New Street, which shortens the journey. The railways and industry travel arm in arm, and this area is renowned for heavy industry, mainly in the metal bashing trade. And it used to be very famous for chain making, but alas, very few of these firms now exist. Only a museum at Mushroom Green carries on the tradition of making chain by hand instead of machines. Talking of machines bring us to a famous part of Bailey. Well, Thank you. 
Roman and Pryor lit the local quiet stadium, where the Ethan's still compete with the best. Another sport attracts regular crowds on a Tuesday and Friday night. Many a pound has been born in lost here. The only one not enjoying it seems to be the air, and can you blame it? Everyone in Craig Leith is trying to work, eat and be merry. The annual carnival seems to achieve the same. It's happy, hard-working inhabitants and long may continue. Thank you. 